welcome back to the Lakeside Productions YouTube channel. For anybody new to my channel, I'm repairing a 1940 40 foot seaplane tender, which is constructed of double diagonal mahogany and oak ribs. My goal is to convert her back into a liveaboard, which she was converted to after the war. My parents did an amazing job repairing and fitting out this boat, you know, 30 odd years ago. They sheeted the entire hull in epoxy and fiberglass mat right up as far as the rubbing strike i mean the stud to it of course this is why without a doubt why the boat is afloat today and you know it's allowing me to continue the work on the boat and now you know once again repairing it back into a liveaboard that it once was converted to after the war of course so their work is definitely giving the boat an extra lease of life and you know now i can continue this work and hopefully we will get many many more years out of this boat so before I can start any work to the port side, I must moor the boat up along the jetty, and that means I have access to the port side now. So first off I made some epoxy filler and that allowed me to fare this patch, this plywood repair I've done at the stern on the port side and then I needed to do mainly the piece at the back towards the transom. It's getting a bit late and cool so it's time to use the blowtorch to kick off the epoxy. So I sanded down any spots that I had applied filler with and I did this with 40 grit sandpaper just to really cut down that, that epoxy filler and it stuff's real fine, real easy to actually sand because it's you know, low density filler. So I wiped down the hull even though I knew I wasn't going to get painting done, it was too late in the evening and of course you don't want that you know dust and particles like stuck to the to the wood so it's better to get that off immediately So doing some additional fairing, I'm making up some more epoxy mud as I like to call it. Again, mixing in that low density filler and just fairing any additional spots that might be low or where I didn't build it up enough with the, the filler the first time. And also filling any, you know, countersunk screw holes that might have had the old lead putty that was loose or came out when I was sanding. And yeah, so then obviously I hit it again with the sander little Dewalt orbital sander is fantastic for really getting stuff done quick and uh, it's just not a it's not you know too heavy and you know it is it does vibrate a lot you know uh, I find wearing gloves helps but um, it's not like a big big heavy duty you know belt sander or you know it's just nice to use and, and very efficient um, so then I again I hit it with 80 grit sandpaper then 120 grit and then finally 240 so that's what I was finishing on. Rain, 
So after sanding now I'm prepping to caulk the top side of the rubbing strake and of course then getting closer to painting with the primer and again I make So I'm going to be using the CT1 caulking, it's the first time I'll be using it and I got recommended this by a, another carpenter, another boat builder and uh, yeah I'm interested to try it, I heard great things about it and it's great you know you don't have to prime your surface, your wood, it's a resinous wood like teak or mahogany you know it's going to go straight on there, you know of course what's more most important is to clean your surface well, don't have any dust or debris, anything like that. And then, um, yeah, let's see how it will go guys. And I may even cock the far side, the starboard side of the hull with this because um, I'm really not happy, to be honest, with Sikaflex 291i. I feel like the product has changed and, you know, even my parents say, you know, when they used Sikaflex back in the day, it seemed to hold much stronger. And, and before and now you know you got to use all these different priming agents and um, just in order to put your sealant on so it's not good enough just to have uh, the sealant on a dry surface you know you got to prime it as well and it just makes the job a lot more tedious and costly too because that primer is not cheap at all and it's in tiny tiny little containers so anyway let's see to be honest i should have pulled the masking tape sooner because it form the skin and you don't want that on your caulking so and as I pulled it off that lip it fell onto the the caulking seam the actual seam the bead of caulking that I'd done and it was only in a few places it wasn't too bad so I went back on it once it had dried with a knife and cleaned it up but um, yeah just again you know learn from my mistakes and pull your tape off sooner
So it's time to apply the first coat of primer. This is a gray primer by Epiphanes. My parents used this Epiphanes Multimarine Primer 30 odd years ago. So, you know, and that was strong stuff. You know, they then obviously put a top coat over it too. Again, by Epiphanes. And like the paint is stuck in places. Like, you know, I obviously I scraped off any loose stuff. I mean, it's been over 30 years that the paint has been on the hull, which is incredible. And uh, I mean, it's still strong in place. And of course, as you see, uh, when I was fearing and sanding down the hull, it's still very strong. And I mean, that stuff's on there. So once it's sanded down well, and then it's, it'll be ready for the primer. So of course, there was more rain. So I fired up the blowtorch and I did a few passes on the hull and the mahogany planking, you know, in about eight to nine foot sections. And then I would paint on the primer, I'd roll it on and then you know hit again in the next eight to nine foot with, a, with the blowtorch and that would just you know pull any moisture that might be in the mahogany well of course there's going to be moisture in there it's outside in the elements and uh, yeah so that warmed up the timber nicely as well and allowed me to brush it on and i got i got great work done So I also thin this primer to about 3% with uh, white spirits. And on Epiphane's data sheet, they recommend anywhere between zero to 5%. So it was actually perfect because I was concerned, you know, I didn't want any dripping to occur on the roller and anything to go into the water. And that was the most important. So um, the fact that I did it to 3% was, was perfect. It still had like a, a nice consistency and um, that it rolled on easily but it wasn't too thick i could see that it was still getting into the, the kind of grain or you know those yeah the grain of the mahogany and if it was any thicker it wouldn't have soaked in well and if it was of course tinned more it would have been drippy and i didn't want that
Looks good so far. So my father and I moored the boat to the far side of the jetty and this allowed me to then paint the primer to the bow much easier. Of course where it was before I couldn't quite get up to the, to the bow. We couldn't bring the boat further back in towards the land uh, because it was too shallow and it's quite dangerous. I didn't want the outdrives of course, especially with one outdrive leaking or one of the, what we assume is the bellow of the outdrive. You know, we don't want to take any risks here of course, and, you know, we needed depth. The man travels from Gordon, he's been working on one of the boats. Uh, 300 foot of, of chain he had to transfer from one boat to the other into his dinghy, like just droop over the side and stuff. And didn't sink the dinghy? No, it was well, he said he was well for it, well managed. Like, Small chain. Good job, thank you. So with this primer you can't put epoxy or epoxy filler over the paint of course and that's why I'm leaving some small sections I'm applying epoxy filler uh, to any you know countersunk screw holes and then afterwards what I can do is I can come back on this and paint more uh, primer over it. So I'm very happy with how it looks so far you know this is just the first coat of primer and it just to see it uniform like this uh, is really, really fantastic and uh, a great sign of progress, of course. And, uh, you can still see like a few discrepancies, like in the hull, uh, you know, where the timber might be shrunk a little bit, or you know, you can see like the grain in a few places, and maybe where the paint, old paint is, you can see it's smooth. But it's it's very subtle, in my opinion, it's very subtle. Um, and again, if you know I want to hit it again with the light sanding before applying another coat of primer, that should fix that. And then the top coat, of course. So, so that's all for this episode, guys. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It would really help me out a lot and help push the YouTube algorithm out to more people. Um, so if you do know anybody who's interested in these kind of videos or working on boats, wooden boats especially, you know, send them my video, send it their way and, and yeah it's fantastic I love hearing your comments and especially the constructive criticism and hearing what projects you guys are working on so um, we're gonna be seeing a lot more boat, boat episodes boat content from me and I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, yeah if you feel like further supporting my project I do have a PayPal link in the description below and thanks for all your support really throughout all of this project um, in, in its entirety entirety so far um, it's, it's really fantastic to see that there's a community of like-minded people working on boats, especially wooden boats, and and uh, yeah, it's it's really great. So that's it, guys. As always, stay productive and have fun creating. I will see you all in the next episode.